Oke, okay, good afternoon class and selamat tengah hari. Now, let's just continue with our lectures on method of least work. And we have seen method of least work, what is the basic procedures which, which we follow when we use method of least work. And what is method of least work for? It is mainly to solve statically indeterminate structures. And uh, we have seen that in method of least work, you need to use Castigliano second theorem. So Castigliano second theorem is used to, to form the deflections which is used for compatibility equations. Okay, and we have seen also what is the basic procedures or basic equation that you need when you want to solve for deflection using Castigliano second theorem. So today we will look into examples how we calculate deflections using Castigliano second theorem for trusses, for beams and for frames. What are the procedures involved and then try to differentiate that from the method of virtual work. So I start with uh, this just to review again the Castigliano second theorem. This is the definitions for Castigliano second theorem. Well, this is, you can read from here, for linearly elastic structures, you need to do partial differentiation of strain energy. You need to differentiate strain energy. With respect to, you differentiate with respect to what? To a force or a moment. If you differentiate with respect to a force, then you get displacement. If you differentiate with respect to a moment, or applied moment, then you get rotations. So that is the definitions. In equation form, this is the equation form that we use to represent Castigliano second theorem. Parcel differentiations of strain energy U with respect to force. Respect to force P, then we get displacement delta in the direction of the force P at the location where the force is acting. If you want to, if you want to calculate rotation or slope, then you differentiate the strain energy with respect to the applied moment or the couple, Mi. So you get theta. So strain energy differentiate partially with respect to moment, you get rotation. With respect to force, you get displacement in the direction of the force at the point of the application of the force. Okay, so this is what we have seen. For example, if we are looking at this beam example, you have a, this is a prop cantilever fixture roller support here. So if you want to find deflection delta 1 at point 1 in vertical directions, that is in the direction of this force P1. So delta 1 is del U del P1. If you want to find rotation at point 2, where there is a moment applied here, M bar. So theta 2 is del U del M bar. So this is what we have for this, if you apply. If you apply this method to Castigliano, uh, use Castigliano second theorem to solve this. Now briefly, we want to show uh, the proof of this. Why del U del P give you displacement. Uh, we talked briefly about the proof. The proof. Okay. Now, when we want to use the proof, if you refer to the nodes, we are looking at one structures. You apply loading. You apply one set of loading. Okay. Then, you, you change the sequence of loading. You fix the loading. You change the sequence of loading. Then you apply what is the what is the strain energy, what is the energy store in the system. Because if you are looking at elastic, linearly elastic structure, the strain energy store in the system will be the same. It doesn't depend on the sequence. So when we compare that, then we can get, we can prove that del U del P is equal to displacement. So this is a proof. So we look, use this example. You look at your notes page 93. 
So you have a simply supported beam. We use this example just to show the, the proof of that. So you have three loads acting here, P1, P2 and P3. Okay. I've simply supported the beam acted by load P1 at, at C, load P2 at D and load P3 at E. And this load is increased gradually. We apply the load slowly from zero until the full value. So slowly until the full value. When you apply gradually, then it affects your, your strain energy, the work done by the force. So the work done by the the work done by the loads P1, P2, and P3, P1, P2, and P3, you apply them gradually from zero. So the work done by P1, P2, and P3 all together when they act on this beam is half. When you apply it gradually from zero value, so your work done is half the load multiplied with the displacement. So delta one the displacement at point one here, delta two at point D here and delta 3 at E. So this is the work done. Half P1 delta 1 plus half P2 delta 2 plus half P3 delta 3. Okay. And for linear elastic structures, the work done is equal to the strain energy. The work done is equal to the strain energy stored in the beam. This is conservation. So whatever work done, the energy is stored in the system as strain energy. So this is also equal to strain energy. Okay, so the strain energy U is given by these equations. Half P1 delta 1, half P2 delta 2 plus half P3 delta 3. And U, we can express this as a function of P1, P2 and P3. We consider P1, P2 and P3 as a variable. Then the strain energy is a function of the load P1, P2 and P3. So remember these equations. So next, we apply a load at uh, a load at point delta two, uh, point two where P two is acting. So we assume that now we want to determine delta two. Delta two, we uh, we assume that we want to determine delta two. Delta two is here. We want to determine this delta 2. This is why P2 is acting, where the load P2 is acting. So we want to determine delta 2. So what do we do? We add. We add. Okay. So we add to the load P2 at the point where it is acting by a very, very small magnitude, a very small dP2, very small. This infinitesimal means very, very small. But it's not zero, but it's only very small. We add a very small value. Then this addition, the addition because you have already the load acting P1, P2 and P3, you plus another load, very small P2, then you have change in strain energy. You get change in the strain energy. So the change in strain energy is given by these equations. Okay. So this is in calculus. In calculus, we have a small change in energy is equal to the change in the energy because of the change in the load P2 multiply the differential change. So this is the from calculus, we have du. This is a small change in the strain energy because you add, you add this thing. So del u, du is del u, del P2 multiplied with dP2. Okay. The, small change, the small change in the load causes a small change in the strain energy. So when you add P1, P2, P3 plus dP2, very small, the total strain energy now becomes this. This one plus the extra one. This one plus the extra one, which is this. So this one, originally because of this, plus this, you get this extra. So this is the energy store now in the system. This, the sequence is P1, P2, P3 first. Then you add a small dP2 at the point where P2 is acting. Okay? Now we change the sequence. You change the sequence, you add this one first, then only you add this. So this is this one first, then this. Now we invert the sequence and find the strain energy and compare the two strain energy. So now we change the sequence, reverse. 
add this one first, then only add this, but the, the final the final loading condition they are the same. P1, P2 plus DP2, P3, this is the same final, only the sequence is different. So we find the strain energy store. And for this very 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 small, very small, small load acting here, you get very, very small displacement D delta 2. So the strain energy store is half dp2 d delta 2 okay, in this case here in the first one here you have this when this is acting so the strain energy store is this okay next when you add in another one p1 p2 p3 what is the strain energy so now we want to find out and we assume that now P1, P2 is applied. P1, P2, P3 is applied. You apply P1, P2 and P3. And the displacement is still delta 1, delta 2 and delta 3 because the DP2 is very small. D delta 2 is very small. So when you put this D1, P1, P2, P3, the displacement are still delta 1, delta 2 and delta 3. Okay? And this is this applies to the case of the problem that we consider, which is linearly elastic. And the displacement is very small. So now we try to find out when you apply, already put DP2 plus P1, P2 and P3. So what is the strain energy store? So this is a strain energy store. This is because of the load DP2 that we apply in the beginning. After that, we plus this P1, P2 and P3. When we plus this P1, P2 and P3 from the beginning, from zero value, so we have this extra strain energy, plus this one, plus this one. So this one appear here because when you apply this loading, this is already there. Okay? When you apply this loading, this is already there, so you have DP2 multiplied delta 2. Because when the structure move, by delta 2, that point, the load dp2 is already acting there. So this is a strain energy that is stored in the system if you use a load sequence, different load sequence. And because this is very small value, this is very small value, very very small, this is also very very small, so very very small multiplied with very very small, you get very 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 small so in engineering when we compare with other terms it is very very small compared with others we will we will when it is very small compared with other terms we are going to uh, we are going to take it away okay because it is very small compared to others it becomes negligible okay so this, we do it very often in engineering, is negligible, then compare with other terms and you, you neglect it, means you remove it. So finally, you get this, this one plus this one. This one we neglect because it's very small. And let us explain, this one appear here because when you apply this loading, this is already acting at the full value. There is no half here, you see there is no half here. Because when you apply this loading, when the structure deflects, this load already acting at the full value. So there is no half. So directly this multiplied with this. So finally we compare this. This one, sequence number one, this is for sequence number two. Uh, this sequence number two, this is load sequence number one. Different sequence. But final loading condition is the same. And because if you are Talking of linear elastic structures, the energy store does not depend on the sequence. It only depends on the, what is actual loading acting. So this is equal to this. This is equal to this and then finally you make them equal. This one cancel, this one cancel, this one cancel each other. So you, you are left with only this equal to that. Then finally we get the proof. Yeah. So. Here we make use of the condition that for linear elastic structures, loading sequence does not affect the strain energy, only the final loading. <coughs> so finally we get these relations that we prove this Castigliano second theorem 
Castellano second theorem says that if you differentiate partially the strain energy with respect to the force in the directions at the point where it is acting then you get the displacement in the same directions of that force in the same directions uh, in the same locations so we have proven this using this simple example so in the same way we can prove also del u del p1 is equal to delta 1 del u del p3 is equal to delta 3 so in general del u del pi is equal to delta i okay so that is just a, a proof to show to you that really if you differentiate the strain energy respect to the load, load you get displacement if you differentiate the strain energy respect to moment you get rotation this is Castigliano second theorem okay so now we are ready to to look at some some actual problems how we apply this but before that we try to summarize again the equation that we use for thrust this is a strain energy summation half f square l over a e and to find delta one is to find delta one you have to differentiate partially with the load so if you differentiate this you get this so for thrust this is the equations that we need to use we have to differentiate partially the axial force with respect to the load then axial force multiplied length divided by cross-sectional area divided by e for example if you want to find this displacement at point 3 here in the direction p3 which is delta 3 then so del fj fj is forces here forces here and forces there differentiate respect to this load multiplied with the forces of each member the length divided by ae and then do this for this member this member this member and you do the summations then you get delta 3 for beam it is bending so you cannot run away from bending moment this is the strain energy half bending moment square divided by ei do integrations and to find delta i you get this relation castigliano second theorem means you differentiate this partially for rotation you differentiate partially with respect to applied moment so finally you get these equations you have to integrate this multiply with this differentiate partially bending moment with respect to the force multiply with bending moment divided by ei integrate for rotation differentiate partially with respect to applied moment this m bar and without m the difference m bar is the applied moment m is the bending moment and integrations example if i want to find delta 2 which is uh, displacement at point 2 in the direction of this load P2 so this is the equation or this is the expressions that you have to use so you have to find bending moment you, you differentiate that bending moment in terms of this P2 then multiply bending moment divided by EI difference and integrations if you want to find rotations then differentiate partially with respect to the applied moment here okay so we be sure about the difference between this M and this M with bar and without bar. Frame, finally frame. Frame is a combination of two parts. One is this is similar to the thrust part. This is similar to the beam part. This is similar to the thrust part, to the beam part. To find theta, always differentiate with respect to apply moment, apply moment. To find displacement, delta, always differentiate with respect to the force. Okay. And if we, if we can neglect this, in frame sometimes we can neglect this. The, the effect of this on displacement is normally small, very small compared to this. So this time, these terms can sometimes you neglect this. So if you neglect, then you get only this for the frame is similar to beam. Okay. Similar to beam where we consider only bending. So this one, axial deformation is not consider so delta one only bending moment part and the same thing for theta one example if i want to find delta one which is here 
displacement at this point in the direction of this force P1. So this is the equation that I use. And I have to separate this into different parts. You do it for this part, segment 1, which is for this one, segment 2, which is this second equation. Here we do not consider axial deformations. So bending moment, you have to know how to evaluate. If bending moment changes, then you have to separate them and then add this integration separately. The same thing if EI changes, then you have to divide the, the frame or the beam into different parts. Okay, similar to what you did for method of virtual work. Bending moment changes, then you have to integrate separately. EI changes, have to integrate separately. So, summarize, del U, del P give you delta. This is the equation. So, you have to know how to find axial force in the member. So, either you use method of joint or you use method of cut sections, whatever method that you want to use, you need to find this F, axial force in the members. Differentiate that with respect to P, you get delta. For beam, so for beam, so this is the equation that we need to use. Need to find bending moment for this part, for this part, for this part, for different part. Bending moment here, bending moment here, bending moment, this part, bending moment, this part, bending moment, this part, because uh, bending moment changes. So you have to evaluate this integration separately and do the summations. And you want to find rotation here, then remember rotation differentiate respect to applied moment, displacement differentiate respect to applied force. Okay. Finally, frame. You can just summarize. A frame is a combination of two. You want to find delta, consider axial deformation, bending deformations. You want to find theta, then this is the equation that you use. This is applied moment, this is applied load here. Applied load. So next, let's look at, I think you have been waiting for many, many weeks now. You want to look at this example, how to difference, how to calculate deflections using Castigliano second theorem. We start with a very simple example which is a beam and it is uh, simply supported here with overhang and uh, you have 50 kN and this is a load acting here 30 kN per meter EI is constant meaning EI, EI and there they are the same so the question is determine delta C so delta C is displacement at point C by using Castigliano second theorem you are given to you EI constant E is this value, I is this value so this method, this problem also, you can solve using method of virtual work. Where you have real system, virtual system, then you find the bending moment, then you apply the virtual work equations. But here we're using Castigliano second theorem. So let's look at the process of, of solving this using Castigliano second theorem. So the first thing that we have to you have to do is, you have to identify the loading, the loading that you need to use. Now here, now here you have this 30 kN per meter, this is a loading here, then you have this 50 kN. Now here we put this 50 kN as P first, and the magnitude in parentheses we know it is equal to 50 kN, but in the beginning, because you want to find displacement at C here and we need to differentiate partially with respect to the force acting at, at C we need to do differentiation so in order to do that we use the symbol of P first to represent this load so we do not we use the symbol P to represent the load so you have this loading plus this loading which is actually 50. But in the beginning, you don't use 50 directly because you need to differentiate partially. So you use the symbol P. And after that, you have to find 
bending moment. You have to evaluate bending moment. So to evaluate bending moment, you need to find, you need to evaluate the reaction force. So this is the normal steps involved. And you see the reaction force here, because of the P here is in terms of P here and P there. The P is actually 50. But we represent that using symbol P first. Then you cut here, you cut here. You cut it here, you cut it here, you find bending moment here and bending moment there. You can use the origin from here or origin from there. Or you can find for this part the origin from B, origin from A. It's the same thing as what you have done for virtual work methods. But the thing is you have to find bending moment. But if you pay attention to the reaction force here, you get this in terms of P, the symbol P, which is the load acting at point C. Which in vertical direction and that is the displacement that we want to find. So according to Kastner's second theorem to find delta C is equal to you need to use this equation del M del P multiply M over EI. So you have to find bending moment and your bending moment will be in the form of the it will be as a function of P. The bending moment is a function of P then only you can differentiate this partially. So bending moment for segment A, B and B, C are needed. So now you make table again, like what you did in virtual work method. Segment A, B, segment B, C, the origin, this is depending on you where you want to put the origin. The most important thing is that you have to know how many parts you have to divide the beams. So the limit, this depends on which part you want to find bending moment, what is the origin. So for the coordinate system that we use, we get limit 0 0.9, 0 to 3. The bending moment, so you have to evaluate this. So you can see that you have P here appearing in your bending moment equation. Differentiate that partially with respect to P. So, have any one of you already emailed Dr. Niraj? No, he's asking, he's asking me to send regard to you all from India. He is now in India. Okay? So, he said, how is everybody? Everybody, you are not taking a last semester, EUM 221. He said, how is everybody? He said, I say, I'm going to ask and I'm going to tell you. So, please, you know, from, if you have, you know his email address? Oh, you don't know. Okay. So he is sending regards to you all, so how are you? So I'm going to tell him you are all fine. <laughs> so, and if you have any question, partial differentiation, you are welcome to ask him. So differentiate this partially, you get this. Please try to revise back how you differentiate, you do partial differentiations. You differentiate respect to P, okay, the rest which has nothing to do with P or zero. So you get this, you differentiate this P, you get this. So after this, you substitute into here, you do the integrations. Yeah, you do the integration, be careful here, don't make mistake. This one sometimes can be very, can be very lengthy calculations and finally you get, you get this. Yeah. Okay. So at this stage, at this stage, you, you see P here. Okay. After that, after you have already, after you have redo the partial differentiations, okay, when you substitute here, then you can, you can actually substitute back the value of P, okay, the value of P, which is actually 50. But before this, before, before these steps here, before these steps here, you need to do the partial differentiation, you maintain the load as P, simple. Mm -hmm. When you want to do integration, you can substitute back now the actual value of P. The actual value of P is, yeah, the actual value of P is 50. So when you do the final integration, you substitute back the value of P. Then you get, okay. in the final evaluation, substitute the value of P. So you put back the value of P here, then you get this negative. So what is the meaning of negative? It's the same as when you solve using virtual work method, negative means the displacement is opposite to the one that you assume for the load. That's why you get negative. 
So final answer indicate the correct direction, the magnitude. You get negative because the displacement is actually going up, not going down. You assume your load going down, but you get negative means the displacement at point C is actually going up. Okay, it's opposite to the force acting at C. So the the steps involved. The steps involved is first you need to you need to determine the loading that you need to use, and the loading will include will include the force or the moment at the point where you want to find displacement. So this first thing, this first diagram here, this loading here, this is the first thing that you have to uh, be able to identify. It includes the actual loading, this 30 kilonewton meter, and it depends on which loading, which, which, uh, what displacement you want to find. You want to find displacement at C, so you have to include in this loading one load acting at C in the direction that you want, this is vertical, and represent that using symbol first. Then the rest, depending if it's a beam problem or it's a frame problem, a thrust problem, beam problem you have to find a bending moment. If a thrust problem you have to find axial force. If it's a frame problem then you have to find axial force and bending moment. So you need to know which equation to use depending is beam or frame or thrust. Then do the necessary calculation for bending moment or axial force. And in this case, sometimes making table is very helpful. And don't do mistake when you evaluate this bending moment. And partial differentiation, this is a basic in mathematics, partial differentiation, don't make mistake here. After that, substitute here and then again, don't make mistake in the integrations. And finally, when you reach to this stage here, then you can back, substitute back this value of P. This value of P which is actually 50. Then finally you get the answer. Okay. So that is the basic steps involved, the basic steps involved in Castigliano's second theorem. If you get negative, what is the meaning? If you get positive, what is the meaning? Okay. Now, let's try to look a little bit on the exercise here. For the same beam problem shown in example 10, which we have just calculated. So, try to look at the, if you want to calculate the rotation at C now. Rotations. You want to find the rotation at C. The same example. Let me change to this. We want to find the rotation at C. At C. <coughs> Can you see at the back? Um, can you see at the back? It's, uh, yeah. okay. So this is the question. Uh, this is the, the beam problem that we have seen in uh, the previous example. Just now, just now we evaluate the displacement, the vertical displacement at C, delta C. Now, you are asked to find theta C. So, theta C. So, I want you to first draw the, what is the loading that you, are, you have to consider in this case here? What is the loading condition that you have to consider? In order to find theta C using Castigliano second theorem. So, what kind of loading that you have to use? Remember the first step, you have to identify the loading that you have to use. So, in this case, if you want to find theta C, what is the loading? What is the loading condition that you have to consider in the analysis? The first step, remember, you have to get right the loading conditions depending on what displacement you want to find, displacement or theta. 
Then only then you know you want to find bending moment or you want to find axial force. So in this case, the very first step, what will be the loading condition that you have to consider? Yeah. Please think about it and then we compare answer. Okay. Think about it and then what is the lo loading conditions that you have to consider? Remember, Castellano's second theorem is del u del, the force or the moment. Okay. Now you want to find moment, you want to find rotation at which point? Then you have to del, del what? Okay. You want to find rotation, right? So your So, so you have to you have to evaluate this using Castellano's second theorem. Del U del M. You have to use this. Del U del M bar C. This M bar C is the applied moment at C. Applied moment at C. So, in order to find this, theta C is del U del applied moment at C. So, there is no applied moment at C, so what do we do now? Just now, you have, when you want to find delta C, You have this, del U del P. P is this, 50 kN, because this is uh, the load act acting at C. But here there is no bend applied moment now, so what do you do? You introduce one, that's right. You introduce a fictitious one. You introduce one there. You introduce, you're pretending there is one there. You introduce one there. It's good to introduce one and you apply you introduce one there but remember in after that in all the calculation remember that this is actually equal to zero so this is the trick that we use you introduce one the, the direction can be clockwise can be anti-clockwise and remember there is actually no loading there but it is that's why it is actually equal to zero but in order to start the analysis process solution process you have to introduce one you you are introduce one which is not there but which is not there then you tell that it is not there that's why it is equal to zero but in the beginning you have to introduce one and this is what we call the fictitious one. This is not true. Fictitious. This M bar C is not there. That's why it is equal to zero in bracket. Okay. So this is fictitious. So, so in Castellano's second theorem, when you want to solve, find deflection in a point where, or in the directions where there is no load acting, you have to introduce one fictitious fictitious loading and remember at the end of the calculation substitute that loading with magnitude zero so this is how we consider that okay. you introduce one which is not there the fictitious one but remember the magnitude is equal to zero at the end of the calculations so this is what the next example is all about the next example where if you look at the next example the thrust we are solving the thrust example now this is a situation where you need to introduce fictitious load so this is a very simple thrust a statically determinant thrust with a point load here horizontal 35 with the point load here vertical 84 this is a actual loading given to you and all the dimension 4, 3 and this height what is the height there? 
and the height there. Okay. So the height should be given. Let me check. Determine, so you are asked to determine horizontal deflections and vertical deflection of joint B for this thrust here. Horizontal and vertical. Use Castigliano's second theorem. Okay. Now, this is a thrust problem. This is a thrust. So, you are asked to find horizontal and vertical of joint B. So, in vertical direction, you have a load 84. You have this load 84. So, there is no problem. In horizontal directions at B, you don't have any load. You have one at D here, but you don't have any horizontal load at B here. So, the same thing with the problem that we just discussed. You have to introduce a fictitious load. Okay? So, because to find horizontal displacement at point B in horizontal directions, you have to use these equations. Differentiate partially axial force in the member with respect to a horizontal load at B. But we do not have the horizontal load at B. Okay, you don't have. You don't have it here. You have only vertical. So you introduce a fictitious one. Apply a fictitious load. Meaning that it is not there, but you apply it there. But remember, the magnitude is equal to zero. Okay. And this is the diagram here. So this diagram is actually showing you all the member forces, the F, the F which has been calculated. This one you have to calculate. This one you have to calculate. So, but here you notice this diagram here, there is this actual loading 35. There is this vertical loading which is actually there, 84. And the fictitious one, the fictitious one P1 horizontally, which is actually zero in the bracket. So, so all the forces, so these forces here, these member forces, these member forces, these member forces, these member forces, you have to calculate. You have to calculate using method of joint or using method of sections by assuming that the loading condition is 35, P2 and P1. The loading condition is 35, P1 here and P2. And remember P1 is 0, P2 is 84. So all these, all these forces, okay? In this member, in this member, this member, this member, this member are axial force that you have to calculate based on the loading condition of 35 and P1 and P2. Because you want to find horizontal, you want to find vertical. So these two loading is represent using symbol first, using symbol. So from Castellano's second theorem, this is what we need to use, these equations. Ea is all constant, so we can take out for horizontal displacement and we differentiate with respect to the horizontal load. For vertical displacement, differentiate with respect to the vertical load. Del F, del P2. This one and then multiply with this, multiply with this and then do the summations. Okay. So again, we make table. To help us to evaluate this. So you have a member A, B, B, C, A, D, B, D, C, D. These are all the members in the truss. There are five members. And you have the length here. The length, this is what we need. And the forces. Forces you have to calculate using analysis of truss. And the forces is in terms of P1 and P2. P1 is the horizontal load, which is fictitious. P2 is the actual vertical load. And you have to do partial differentiation, this column, del F, del P1, del F, del P2. This is to evaluate horizontal displacement. This is to evaluate vertical displacement. And then this one, multiply with this, multiply with this, come to this column. This one, multiply with this, multiply with this, this column. This one, you need it when you want to evaluate horizontal displacement. This one you need when you want to evaluate vertical displacement. So substitute, substitute this one here. 
Then EA, remember what is EA given to us? Be careful with the unit. When you convert the unit, be careful. Gigapascal is 10 to the power of 9, so don't make a mistake. If you use meter square, make sure everybody, every term here use meter or millimeter, then every, make sure that the unit is consistent. So this one, substitute here, divided by EA given to us, then you get positive 0 0.35 mm. And here, when we substitute here, then you get 797.08. Then finally, you get also positive, meaning that the displacement is in the same direction as the loading that you apply. Okay. We have a very precious one minute left, very silent, so I talk very softly. Okay. When you evaluate this, finally when you want to get this value here, the P1 has to be substituted with value 0. 82 substitute with value 84. Finally, okay? So, remember, P1 is fictitious. At the final stage, you have to substitute with value 0. Okay? So this is substitute P1 equal to 0 and P2 into the equation when you want to calculate this. Then you get this and this. Okay, thank you very much. So, this is lectures for today.